G'day guys, Mackie with the Outer Circle, and today I want to, well I just want to put out some content, because we haven't hosted much lately, um, we're still digesting everything with 8th edition, um, but I just want to have a quick chit chat about some things I've been thinking about. Um, I put up the video on, I think it was Monday night, Australia time, uh, talking about some of the feedback we've gotten. That feedback was not cherry picked. People have picked out um, some good things about 8th edition. However, there's a lot of negative things about 8th edition. I think the biggest thing that people... There's two big things people are pissed about. The first one is the fact that the way that we build lists in 8th edition is a bit craptacular. Um, it's n in no way at all currently superior to 7th edition. And the big thing with 8th edition that we have to keep in mind is that if you're going to rewrite everything with 40k, invalidate all the books you've released, invalidate a game that's been rather similar since probably 1998 with the release of 3rd edition, and has only evolved, if you're going to invalidate all of that, that's fine. But whatever product you put out has to be markedly superior. Like, it has to be just easily superior. Or else people are going to be pissed. Because in previous editions, like say, 7th, 6th, 5th, whatever, you could use a 3rd edition book. You'd have to tweak rules here and there, but it would work pretty intuitively. Now, and not so much. Still doable, but a lot more effort would have to go into doing so. So, big problem right there at the list building. Another thing people really don't seem to like in some circles is the fact that the game does... Well, it's, it's not right how drawing line of sight from any part of a vehicle, for example, works. It's like a sponsor sees you, then all guns can shoot you, you know, or an exhaust pipe can see you, and hey, your turret now has line of sight. It's a bit silly. Um, whether or not vehicles needed to change to this format, I don't think so. Um... See, a lot of people are out there saying, oh, but, you know, um, it was always just meant to be this way. You know, there was no need for vehicles to um, exist currently in, with their rules. You know, armor values were too hard. Having to look up charts was too hard and tables was too hard. Well, I want to share with you something that was written by a friend of mine um, that I think sums it up really well. Um, it goes a little like this. When talking to someone who's a fan of the 8th edition... Uh, they say to you, you're just being a hater. 8th is awesome and 7th Ed sucked. You respond, well, I guess it's because it seems like GW just threw away 17 years of data and gaming knowledge and just attempted to reinvent the wheel and just ended up with a shittier wheel while removing realism and tactics from the game. The 8th Ed fan will then say, nah man, it's great. You're being stupid. GW says it's awesome. You respond, okay, what's awesome about it? The 8th Ed fan will say, Set to hit values instead of ballistic skill. And me, ballistic skill was always easy. You just took your ballistic skill and subtracted 7 from it. Oh, sorry, subtracted it from 7. The 8th Ed fanboy would say, Yeah, but doing math sucks. This is much faster. Okay, well what about armor and cover saves? How do they work? The 8th Ed fanboy will say, They aren't set numbers anymore. Weapons reduce your save. And cover adds to your save. It's so much better than just a set number. And then you're left saying, But you just said, Oh, never mind. I don't like set to hit an assault. It's not comparative anymore and that's lame. The fanboy will say, It sucked before. You had to look at a chart to see what you needed. Charts suck. And me, I say, Well, not really. It was pretty easy. If your weapon skill was equal, you needed a 4+. plus. If it was higher, you needed only a 3+. plus. And lastly, if they were higher than you, you still only needed a 4 plus to hit, unless they were double plus 1, and then you needed... You get cut off by the fanboy. Just stop right there. See how complicated that is? We don't have to memorise that stupid shit anymore. Set numbers are way better. Also, comparative charts suck, and you are just writing out the comparative chart into long form. It's still a chart. Me. Well, I don't like how the to wound roll works anymore. It doesn't make sense, and it's more complicated. The 8th Ed fanboy. No, it's not. It's not a stupid chart anymore. Charts are dumb. Now you just look and see if your strength is the same as their toughness. And if it is, you need a 4+. Plus. 
If it's higher, you need a 3+, plus, unless it's double, and then you only need a 2+. Plus. On the other side, if their toughness is higher... Me? Hmm, this is starting to sound really familiar. The 8th Ed fanboy. No, it's totally new and awesome. Did I mention charts suck? Me? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, how do vehicles work? 8th Ed fanboy. Oh, they're great now. They're all monstrous creatures. Me, so they don't take damage results anymore? Ain't that fanboy. They still do. It's just different. You see, every time they take wounds, you look at their data, sh data sheet and you see what their health level is at the stats change as they take wounds. That's so cool, right? Me? Um, so they have a chart. A chart that changes their stats. Fanboy. No, charts suck. It's a data sheet. Me? Walks away. <laughs> so that was sent to me by a mate. I will... Put in the comments to this video, I will pin it as the top comment verbatim what was sent to me, because I think that is just a great analysis of the problem here. Every time that someone points out, like, I'm, I'm on the fence, I am dead set on the fucking fence, and I've copped nothing but shit for months over this, and I've been saying, like, look, I can see merits to 8th, I can see negatives to 8th, and whenever I give any fucking opinion that's not clear cut down the line... In favour of one side or the other, people try and shit on me. And that's fine. I don't care if you shit on me. As long as you shit on the argument. Right? And people aren't doing that. They're just targeting me. What I want to see is people actually targeting what I have to say. And when you say, you know, they've just shuffled all the shit around, the game is no fucking better, then target that. Turn around to me and say, well, actually, you know, I find that the way that you can actually move certain armies now, and, you know, orcs are clearly superior to what they used to be before, Tyrannians are operating better, you know, certain units in Chaos got improved, these are all things you've been complaining about yet, Maka, you know? That's great, that's what I want to hear, say that to me. Don't just say, fuck you, faggot, you need to get laid, because that is exactly the sort of comments I've been getting lately, okay? Also, don't act like fucking... 8th edition is the next coming of Christ. It's not. It really isn't. It, in fact, it's very fucking mediocre. Right? I think that's the best way to put it. It has all the same old bloat that 7th edition did in the actual um, gameplay itself. Because you've taken streamlined some phases, some phases got a bit longer. Right? Psychic phase seems to have gotten better in some ways. I think the powers are up the shit, but whatever, whatever, you know. 20 years, a thousand suns. What the fuck would I know about Psychic? Um, what else? What else is playing on my mind here? Um, fuck, the fact that a vehicle, like a Rhino, might have a squad in it. Maybe a Land Raider has a squad in it. Gets locked in Assault. Now, you're not meant to be able to lock things in Assault, but you can. If you surround the vehicle completely, people pointed out, then by the rules, it's it can't leave the combat. So it just stays there, and the unit... Is just trapped inside the vehicle and can't get out. Maybe the vehicle can, you know, drop its flaps and, you know, maybe squash a person standing next to it and then drive out the gap created. I don't know, but if it doesn't and it gets destroyed, kaboom to the vehicle, kaboom to the guys standing around it, and definitely kaboom to the people in it. So, yeah, what a bit of a cost of fuck that is. And yeah, okay, you can shoot pistols in assault now. That's not revolutionary. Um, Mordheim was doing that for years. You know, the whole shooting phase, another thing that gets me. How is it a better shooting phase? Okay, you've simplified things by no more twin-linked. You just get more, more shots. Okay, cool. That's streamlined, I guess. It's a bit dumb, but whatever. It used to be once upon a time, though, that, you know, you'd have, say, a heavy weapon squad. And you're given two options. There's two squads standing in front of you, you know? And and both those squads are dangerous. And you're like, fuck, I can only kill one of them before they get to me. And I know, whichever one I shoot at, I will kill it. I will overkill it easily, right? And you're left with that choice. And as the commander on the day, you've got to make the strategic choice, right? And this is something I find fun, that um, whether or not the, you win or lose the game is nothing but, the adrenaline rush of having to make a decision on the fly is fantastic. But now, with 8th edition, you don't have that dilemma. You just, like, sit there drooling, licking doorknobs, and you just say, Oh, 
I will just split my fire. Shoot some guns at that squad and some guns at that squad. Like you're a fucking tactical genius there, Nelson. Um, you know, that's removing gameplay for me. Same thing with the way cover mechanics have worked. Instead of, you know, wisely picking where to set up your units and using the terrain, no, that's just being thrown out the fucking door. Same thing with where you deployed your units. You know, you deploy units in a certain way, spread them out, keeping coherency in certain ways in order to avoid templates, placing strategically your your squad members out in certain points in order so that, you know, if someone drops down with like a drop pod full of flamers, you know, they'll only hit certain points of the unit. Now, the person in the drop pod, they don't have to have a clue about what they're doing if they just land close enough or even just walk the squad over to you and they get close enough with those flamers, they're just rewarded by instantly having a ton of hits. They can hit units, guys in the squad they couldn't even touch with their templates before. You've just dumbed the game down. This is what I find frustrating about 8th edition. This is why I haven't been able to get into it yet. I want to give this edition a chance. I really do. But I'm looking at a game that is being dumbed the fuck down. And it is not going faster because of it. They've just added bloat in other areas. Like... In 7th edition, you just had a heavy weapon. You could either shoot it, or you could snap shoot it if you moved. Now, oh, you can move, you can still fire it, but it's a minus one modifier. Oh, and if the squad you're shooting at has camo cloaks, well, that's another minus one modifier. And if you hit them, you then have to roll to wound them. Now, if you wound them, they reduce their armor save by the AP value of your weapon, but then they get to add their armor save if they have cover of some description. Oh, and then you get to do your wound modifier. How is that fucking simpler than to hit? to wound, to save. It's not. It's just frustrating, and this is why I'm finding it so hard to get into 8th. And these aren't the arguments that people are targeting. When people come on the channel at the moment, they're going, Oh, you're just a hater. Chaos got good. You need to get good too. I don't need to get good too. What I need is for people to say, Okay, GW hyped the game really, really high up. And now we've just got to bring it back down. We've just got to bring it back down. And we've got to critically analyse the addition. What is good? What is bad? Me personally, what is bad? Everything is just watered right down. There's no... I don't like that things are watered down. I I don't want to see that... You know, chaos has been reduced once again to... Your army is only a cult army if it has cult troops... You know, for Chaos, for example, oh, your colour scheme determines what faction you are. That's piss. I don't want to see that. What I do want to see is that as they move forward, they address the issues that people have raised. I want to see them improve 8th edition by greatly, greatly uh, simplifying and improving how you actually lay out your army lists. Because right now they are shit. I've looked at them. A lot of people have looked at them. People are saying in comments, you know, people have walked in, gone to play a game of 8th, just looked at it and gone, nah, this is fucked. Too complicated. Building the army list should be one of the simplest parts. And yes, I'm one of those people who does enjoy just sitting down and fucking around with a list maker. You know, whether it's army builder or quartermaster or whatever. But some people, they just want to be able to quickly put together a list and play a game. They don't want to have to use power levels and piss like that. You know, so that's something that needs to be fixed. I think that this edition has great, great scope for expansion. You know, Chaos, they can get their legions now. They can have their proper legions built up. And I'm not just talking a troop's choice, an elite's choice, and a HQ for each fucking army. I mean, no, give them actual rules that can be applied to their units. Because right now, the way everything works, everything's just plain vanilla. Sure, you can make a Death Guard army... Or a Thousand Sons Army. But is it really a Thousand Sons Army? And again, that's simplifying army lists. I'm talking about the fact that, you know, upgrades are on a completely different page. And this is something that's always been a problem. I think what they need to do is just take a quick leaf out of the Horus Heresy books. Again, I have referenced them often. But the 4th edition book, what it did was it gave you two little sheets of paper that came with the codex. And... These sheets of paper, um, well, not Codex, sorry, just the uh, Conquest, Book 4, Book 4 Conquest, apologies for my verbal typo, uh, gave you 
cards, and these cards were A4, printed out on some nice gloss paper, thick card. And it had all the weapon stats and all that, you know, just a quick flick data sheet. They need to put those in the codexes or in unit boxes or whatever, right? So when people go to open up their um, Warhammer 40k books, these bloody um, index books, they can just put down these cue cards right next to them and just quickly cross-reference with the look of the eyes. Just something like that, right? I mean, people have already figured out how to do it for themselves. They're just photocopying pages out of the books. But some people have pirated the books because of this, because they're like, ah, fuck that, too much effort. So they're already trying to pirate these things, and they're going to download them as PDFs and print out the shit they need. So, you know, people will always pick what's easiest for them. So make it easy for them, Games Workshop, and people will go to you. Sure, there will always be a few holdouts who are jerks, but yeah. You know, you can't do nothing about that. But the majority will just do what's easiest. And if you create a great book that's intuitive, easy to use, that kind of thing, people will just, they will love you for it. Um, actual gameplay-wise, it's it's funky right now. It's like some of the best and worst aspects of 7th edition all over again. <laughs> you know, things like all those armor save modifiers that... You know, part of the reason they got rid of them back in 2nd edition when they went to 3rd was because it was slowing the games down heaps. And it's just a bit hilarious to me that we've come full circle and we've now just pushed that shit right back in. <laughs> like, I seriously, I stand by my comments. I do not remember anyone mass screaming for armor save modifiers in 40k. I don't remember people saying we need to change movement values to set um, values for every single unit. Like, why does every unit have to have different movement values? You're saying you're simplifying the game, but you've now given a heap of units different movement values you've got to, you know, memorise. So you haven't simplified the game there, have you? You've just made it a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. It used to be just infantry all move six inches. That was easy. So again, this whole simplified thing that people keep going on about hasn't happened. They've dumbed it down. I stand by that. They've dumbed it down by removing things like, you know, unit placement tactics... Um, using terrain to your advantage. I mean, sure, terrain is still usable. You know, blocking line of sight is still a thing. But come on, you can't tell me the tactics are at the same level. And not just that, I think the biggest sin that people have pointed out so far is that the imbalance of power is still there. It's massively there. In fact, Necrons are the dominant faction that people are moving towards, especially tournament players. And I hear this from very, very well-placed people over in the U.S. We're talking like, you know, on rankings HQ, top people in the game here, and they are going to <laughs> Necrons. Because they're just like, yeah, it's just an auto-win at tournaments if you build your list wisely. So um, the units they're talking about is like Ghost Ark, um, that Tomb Chariot thing, The I forget what it's called. Uh, but it had the Necron Lords sitting on the top of it, and yeah. Neither here nor there, but you know. This edition was supposed to fix all that, and I think it can fix all that. I just think they shouldn't have hyped it up as having fixed it all, when clearly it didn't. And I'm not talking about people going out of their way to break the system, I mean, people would just put together shit, and it's just happened by accident. You know? One person commented in the video, they had a Sisters of Battle army they built specifically kitted out full of anti-tank stuff and they just could not kill tanks with it. They were just struggling because tanks are just so tough now. The problem with tanks in previous editions, before I finish this long rambling chat up, was that Games Workshop just made anti-tank too abundant. You go back to 3rd edition and you tell me how many units are full of melter guns. You tell me how many units are full of plasma guns. How many units are full of power weapons. It just simply wasn't a thing. And so the 3rd edition rules and the tank rules worked just fine up until 5th edition, where 5th edition started to get a bit funky because um, so much sort of power creep happened in 5th edition compared to any other edition. It was the worst for it. And then 6th edition tried to change all that up because they're going, oh, you know, Lamb Raiders and stuff are really, they're getting hard to kill. So we should give them hull points so they don't just get, you know, weapon destroyed 60 times. And they did it. But when they did it, it created other problems. Because now vehicles were just getting glanced to death. And people would just go, alright, turn one. I'm going to shoot that fucking rhino and get first blood and a victory point. 
and they were doing it. <laughs> and that was a major problem with 6th edition, and it was not helped really by 7th edition. It didn't really fix that. So they tried to find ways around it by making vehicles harder to just outright kill by making just a single chart, because back in the old times, I'll say, there used to be two charts, a glancing chart and a penetrating chart. And what you rolled originally, you went to one of those charts to figure out what damage you did. You know, like a four plus on a penetration was destroyed, six was an explosion, yada yada. Nowadays, however, they, they well, with seventh edition, they try to rectify by saying, all right, you've got hull points, but people are getting glanced to death too easy. So now we'll make it so you can only blow up a vehicle if you roll a seven. Right? What they should have done was look at what the causes were of the problems in the first place. Because they didn't rectify that. And now with 8th edition, they've just dialed all the vehicles up to 11. They've just gone, oh, fuck, what sounds like a good amount of wounds for a Spartan? Uh, I don't know, 20? 20? Yeah, 20? Assuming that, you know, someone's going to, like, penetrate it with a las cannon and roll it six wounds each time. Yeah, okay, 20 probably will be a fair amount if you're going to cause, you know, four penetrating las cannon hits are going to take off six wounds each. Yeah, fair enough. But how often is someone going to get four penetrating las cannon hits and roll sixes? It's not going to happen. How often is that going to happen? They're going to get, like, a three or a four on average. So they're going to need, like, four las cannons rolling a four plus in a row to, to like, you know, rolling to hit, rolling to wound, and then the Lambrader failing its armor save, and then, oh, sorry, the Spartan failing its armor save, and then having to roll those D6s. I don't see it happening. I definitely don't see you being able to outplay your opponent and kill those vehicles in the first turn. And again, people were using, like, Sisters of Battle kitted out with melter guns, multi-melters, that kind of thing, and they're not killing a single Land Raider in a battle because they just made them too tough. I mean, I know I went on for sort of the last three minutes there, just going on about vehicles and vehicle problems, but they're key things to look at. And because this is supposedly a uh, evolving rule set that will be changed over time, and new things will be added, things will be rebalanced, I think it's all fine. 8th edition will be fine if they rectify those things, but they are something they'll have to look at, and look at them quick. Because right now, there's a bit of a clusterfuck. Also, why do vehicles have attacks? Rhinos, mm, probably shouldn't. Orc vehicles, yeah, okay, if they've got like a death roll or something on the front, sure. How does a drop pod attack people? Does it raise the doors and just drop them down dramatically onto the, <laughs> the people swarming it with fucking grenades? I don't know, it sounds stupid to me. You've got to always draw that fine line between the narrative behind the game and the actual gameplay itself. And that's definitely not happened in the case of the uh, the drop pod and assault, I can tell you that. Anyway, I'm back with the Outer Circle. Thanks for just listening to this rant and chat and, you know, shit posting I've just done for, you know, 24 minutes or whatever. Leave your comments below. Again, try not to attack the person. Attack the argument. Tell me why I'm wrong about things. I'm totally fine with that. And you make a really good point. I'll be in there in the comments going, hey, you made a really good point. Ask people, it's happened before in my other videos. You just come into the video and say, hey, you're a fuckhead. Yeah, you're probably not going to get a response from me that's not sarcastic. You'll probably just end up on like one of my other videos, me saying, oh, look at this dickhead. Because that's what you are. You know, you call a person names, they're going to call you names. It's just it's pointless doing it, right? Anyway, thanks all for watching. I'll see you all next time.